Welcome to Composer's Play. My name is Scott Tobin. For the last 10 years, I've been composing music for video games, such as Project Reality, Squad, and Postscriptum. The concept of Composer's Play was brought on from my passion for video game music. So, join me as I relive, discuss, and get a little nostalgic with the composers of some of the most memorable video game music. Hey everyone, welcome to Composers Play, and today I'm going to be playing Duke, and I'm going to be joined by one of the original composers of Duke Newton Treaty, and it is Mr. Lee Jackson. Lee, thank you so much for joining me. Hello Scott, thank you for having me on, it's a real pleasure. I know, it's, it's my pleasure, I can't wait to do this. So, now before, <laughs> I was going to ask you, how, like, how did you get started in doing uh, the music for video games, but I just want to talk about... The, the grab bag for a second of the Duke Nukem 3D theme and it's um it's I don't know it's one of those things like in gaming history like you hear a theme and you know exactly where it's from you know and um, you know you hear Mario and Halo and I, and I think personally I feel that Duke, that Duke team is definitely up there it's so recognizable you know oh, I appreciate it uh, well Duke theme, that has got a little bit of a strange history behind it. Um, I have to give you the history behind what I call the binge. Right. Um, uh, you know, people today do binge watching of things on Netflix and other things on Hulu. Well, mm -hmm. back then, I did a little bit of binge listening. <laughs> right, um, okay. I took home, I gathered up a bunch of heavy metal uh, CDs from uh, the developers and from Joe Siegler, a good friend of mine at 3D Realms, um, nice. and took them home with me and binge listened uh, to them. things from Judas Priest, uh, Metallica, um, Ozzy Osbourne, nice. uh, all of those groups. And just trying to get a feel for the heavy metal sound that everybody was wanting within the game. Gotcha. And uh, as part of that, I wanted to see if I could kind of take some of the elements that were in uh, that music and put it into my own work. So mm -hmm. it was like grabbing something from here, taking something from there, a bit from one song, a bit from another song, never really taking it directly, just trying to kind of take a bit of an influence from one place and another from another. Oh, and I... like reaching into a grab bag and pulling out <laughs> items. And, and so when I got finished with my writing session after doing the listening, I had to give the file that I was working on a name, so that's what I gave it the name. Grab that makes back. sense. Gotcha. You know, so that's how it got its name. Wow. And um, once I had enough of, uh, material for a loop, I brought it up and gave it to the developers. And uh, initially, it was intended as level music. I thought oh, okay. that it would be. I thought that it would be good for uh, just shooting, shooting around. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that it would wasn't finished. To be honest, right? I thought it was supposed to be a little bit longer than just the snippet that you're hearing right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't ever really get the chance. Originally, I said, originally being the working word there, to mm -hmm. expand on it because um, I got told one day that uh, by Greg Malone, who was the lead on the team at the time, that he and George had sat down and listened to all of the pieces of music that were in the directory at the time, and the two of them had decided that Grab Bag was going to be the theme song for Duke. Wow. It was the... I asked him why, and he said, well, it's the closest thing that's in there that sounds like a theme right now, so that's what we're going to go with. Gotcha. Um, I mean, 
uh, it's amazing because like I know Megadeth covered it, so that must be a pretty nice feeling, right? <laughs> Well, I've got mixed feelings about Megadeth's cover. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I do. Um, Megadeth's cover actually changes notes yeah. from my original theme. Um, it uses a different scale. Uh, it uses uh, somebody else's cover version of of my of my theme as the inspiration. For their cover version, it leaves out the synth solo, which is the part that I uh, wrote as an addition. If I, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, I didn't think that the theme was finished. Um, I, later on, I came back to it and quote unquote finished the theme by adding on the guitar solo and the synthesizer solo, and then the big build up to the finishing part right which is mm -hmm. not present in the part of the theme that you're listening to right now sure um, sure all of that's absent from Megadeth's version mm -hmm. um, they threw that out and just stayed with the uh, cover version that was done by the other person so I kind of feel like it's not 100% my version that they did right okay uh, so hence the mixed feelings about it sure uh, i mean it's it's neat to have it up there done by them but um you have to take into account the way they released it also um they only released it on a disc in japan that's right and yeah. mm -hmm. uh when you look at the disc um it's it's labeled on the in, on the liner notes as bonus track, and it doesn't have anybody's attribution oh, wow, down okay. there. Doesn't have my name on it. Doesn't mm. have anyone's name on it. So there's no royalties coming in. There's nothing like that. Oh at wow! All. I didn't know that. Jeez. Yeah, not getting the dime from it. Oh man, so, that's 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 awful. So. Uh, really, really mixed feelings from that right. part. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, look, I'd be the same, you know. Um, but I've, I've had people do uh, mixes of uh, covers of my music, and they've and it, they've completely changed it. But like, I, I'm like, yeah, okay, it's a little bit different from what I expected. But I, 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 can, I get where you're coming from in the sense that you know, it's they, you know, they're not adding in parts that you thought might work for the song, and but yeah, yeah, the, I was really. And be honest, I was really um, proud of that synthesizer solo and the guitar solo part. Yeah, I mean, it's my favorite part. <laughs> that, I, I put a lot of work into those two uh, and into the build up to the end um, and having it end with that big uh, chime stroke at the end of it. Right. Um, I thought that was the, the best part of it, actually, the, the ending note. And. Uh, just to have it all go away just made it a little bit less you know, when I listened to it less less of grab bag right just yeah for lack of any other way to put it so yeah I, I still I still haul out my original and listen to that every now and then oh yeah it's I don't know, like I think on YouTube it's got like a, a couple of million views and <laughs> it's just it's ridiculous you know it's it's just everybody knows it you know yeah, I do. I do occasionally find some people who've gone in and uh, covered the original version, and I do thank them for sticking to the original. Uh, nice. I really appreciate it when people stick to the original notes. Yeah. I mean, because I, I understand that I didn't write it uh, in an easy, uh, an easy scale. I mean, what I wrote was not easy to follow. Right. Uh, I think I wrote it with a drop D tuning. Um, I didn't realize that until well after I had written it. Um, I didn't understand the tuning of the guitar at the time. I just understood the music that I was writing, not the actual guitar tuning. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Because yeah, I think it's in it's in 
is it F sharp minor, I think? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I was just watching the, uh, watching what I was playing. Right. I in, intentionally took one of the notes down a half step. One of the things that I did was the da 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 Right. That's that's the bit where I took it down a half step. Um and that's the note that all of the other cover versions have changed. The da 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 that's where they've changed it. Right, okay. Yeah. Made it easier to play, I guess. I don't know um why they went in and changed it but just that one note if is you it, get what it, i'm talking about uh i wonder which one it is yeah it's probably in, in the in the, the main bass yeah yeah so uh, i don't understand why they did it but um mm. strange um makes a big difference it does but make a I'm, big difference yeah yeah but I'm not going to sit and harp on it all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's your song. You should be allowed to be. <laughs> but um, I, I think what makes it so catchy is, because um, I was talking to my brother about it, and uh, it, it's that phrase, da 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 and, and it even happens in the hits, da da bam ba bam bam And I think people right. people really catch on to that. And, and you've obviously, you've used it in the whole song, especially at the start, the... You know the yeah, it's it's there. It's also there as well in in the um at, at the start. So I think that's yeah. It's just it's clever writing, you know. Oh, thanks. I tried to keep it through uh through most of the rest of the songs in the game as well. Uh, oh, really? All all of the rest of the stuff that I wrote, um, much of it has instances of da 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 in either the percussion or in some of the rhythm backing um, oh. all the way through it. Either that or you've got a three note uh, don 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 bit. Gotcha. A uh, little motif going on. So it's it kind of sews together the rest of the soundtrack. Bobby, I don't think he went with that. Um, he had his own glue that he used to keep his tracks together um i tried to i tried to go with some of his stuff too but i oh. had my own stuff to do that's cool actually and like i was only i was actually i did a composer's play with bobby on doom mm -hmm. and, and we were talking about yourself and himself um doing the music for duke and you guys never really got together to you know to do the music but like it, the music and Jig really works together, and like both of your styles are very different, uh, but it complements the game so well, you know. Yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, we did bump into each other a couple of times and have a little talk whenever he'd come up to, uh, well, come down from uh, from Tennessee and uh, hang out with uh, the developers. Uh, we'd talk. Um, I had kind of a guilt complex, I thought, uh, because I felt like I was taking work away from him. Right. Um, uh, in time after, uh, working on, on all those projects, you know, in the years since Bobby and I have become really good friends. Um, he's a great man. And, uh, Turns out my fears were unfounded. Right. Um, <laughs> it's nice to know that. Um, I uh, I learned a lot from him. He was a great mentor, mm -hmm. and he he did teach me a lot. Um, just from looking at his MIDI files, and. Right. Even in going back through them, uh, when I was remastering the files for AUG format mm -hmm. in the 20th anniversary world tour, um, I still learned a couple of things. Wow. Um, there, he, he did a great job on the original stuff that he worked on. Right. 
and it was an honor to work with him. Yeah, he, he actually said exactly the same thing uh, to me. He said he, he loved working with you, and, you know, he loved your, he loved your tunes as well uh, for the game. I'm glad to hear that. That's, <laughs> that's an honor as well. <laughs> <laughs>